This is Peter with Almost Chrome, Marco with Clean Culture. Uh, here to talk to you about um, tank polishing. End caps. We get a lot of people hate end caps. I'm gonna be real honest. I hate end caps. Can't stand them. They're, there's a definite technique to doing end caps. Uh, you have to be very careful with them. It's considered a flat surface, but as you can see, it's not quite a flat surface. So we still use most of the same flat surface techniques when we're cutting our end caps and even when we're coloring. But when we get out to the edges, we have to angle our buff to make it around this convex surface. So we're still gonna back cut with the machine. We're gonna load up with brown. We're gonna back cut all the way down. We're gonna make it about halfway and then we're gonna have to reload while we're back cutting. And then back cut even further rake out at that point you know we've talked about raking on cuts on cut buffs this is a lot of aluminum it's a big surface it's gonna gum that pad up with uh, metal so you want to rake it out before you start your uh, diagonal cut same way as we did on the box you're gonna want a diagonal cut all the way from I usually start from the left bottom corner and diagonal cut all the way up to the uh, right top corner so rake out again, reload. <clears throat> then we're gonna turn the buff to do a 45 degree left angle cut, but we're just gonna go side to side and we're gonna push that compound line all the way up. Um, heavily damaged tanks might take an extra cut after that. Um, most end caps, we can pretty much stop right there and then we can go into our color buff which color buffing is gonna be with the yellow buff in a green bar, and then we're gonna do a 90 degree all the way up. So color buffing is where uh, on these uh, surfaces, on the end caps is where it comes in, where it gets tricky because you have to angle the buff and then bring it back, and then angle the buff, bring it back. So you're gonna be constantly changing your buff angles. Once we actually get to uh, polishing this surface, uh, we'll show you all that. Uh, we'll do. We'll stop, and I'll kind of explain and show you. Uh, I'll point the camera in so that way you guys can kind of see how we're doing that. Okay, so you just saw how we did our back cut and our initial first cut diagonally going up. One of the things I want to talk about, this is, we've touched on this a couple of times uh, throughout our video series, uh, raking and loading of compound. Raking your buff, when to rake. Um, when you've got this buildup of metal, when you start seeing that, that sheen on your buff, that's when it's time to rake. That's just metal buildup on your buff. If you try and load over top of that, as soon as you touch it, your compound is gonna go away, your metal to metal contact. You're not doing anything. So on a surface this big, it's always a good idea, it's even on cutting, to just go ahead, give your buff a quick touch with the rake and, and move on. One of the biggest questions I get is, hey, how much compound should I use when I'm loading my buff? You don't want to load it all the way over. I see guys loading compound all the way over on this side of the buff to where they're, they've got compound all the way around here. You're not buffing with this area of your buff. You're buffing with this. Maybe a little on the edge on each side. So when we're loading our compound, we'll start right about there and roll it over, okay? And you wanna go a couple of times, you're good. You don't want to sit here and just load and load and load and load. All you're doing is just spraying compound everywhere. You're wasting your product. So I'll show you that real quick. When we get going here, I'll show you exactly how we load. So like I said, you don't have to go all the way around here because you're not going to be using that, sur that part of the surface of the buff.
our end cap is cut and ready for color. We did three passes on this one. This end cap, a little bit damaged, spent its life getting acid washed. Want to make sure that we just get, get it really deep cut. Uh, one of the things when you're cutting, remember that you're going to do a diagonal cut and then you're going to do a 45 degree left angle. Okay. What you're doing there with that left angle is you're canceling out your diagonal cut marks. So you're bringing a different cut mark all the way up the tank. Um, I went ahead and did a third cut. And as you can see, I switched to about a, well, about a 45 degree right angle this time to cancel out those other cut marks. So now I've got this type of pattern going on. So when I change out to my yellow buff and get my green compound and go vertical 90 degrees, it's gonna clean this tank up. It's gonna leave a nice good finish. Um, a rule of thumb, some polishers do this, some polishers don't. A rule of thumb, uh, what we do in my shop, if you cut with 6,000, you color with 6,000. Uh, sometimes you can get away with cutting with 3,000 RPM or you know, uh, 3,200, 3,500, depending on the machine you're using. Um, a lot of times though, uh, we use a 6,000 to cut. It's a, it just makes the process faster. You don't have to use as much compound or product. Um, but I always tell my people in my shop, if you're cutting with six, you color with six. Um, so that way you keep your patterns consistent. So you wanna keep your speed consistent and your patterns consistent. So I'm gonna swap out and put a yellow buff on this 6,000 RPM. And that's what we're gonna color with. Again, when you're plating your buffs, always make sure that you're looking at your directions, okay? Um, Renegade Products USA, when you buy buffs from Renegade, they have a little arrow on them to tell you which direction to go. And as you start using it, you'll see which direction your buff's gonna go. So always make sure that you look for that, plate your buff the right way. Now remember, on your coloring, raking your buff out is very important every time you have to reload your compound when you color. Um, coloring is where you get your burn marks. Sometimes you can get a burn on cut. It's very, it's actually very difficult to get a burn mark when you're cutting. Um, I've seen it done. Actually, I've done it before. Um, so, but it takes talent to burn when you're cutting, um, but it can be done. But for the most part, your burns are gonna come in when you color. And a lot of that has to do with not raking your buff out, not using enough compound, going too slow as far as your advancement. This is spinning 6,000 RPM. So you wanna get that thing moving, okay? Remember, color is twice as fast as cut. You don't wanna spend a whole lot of time coloring this thing. You've already spent enough time cutting it. You've got a good, uh, decent surface. Now you just wanna go over it and clean it up. So. Always keep that in mind. Now our end cap is colored, ready for wipe down with our liquid hand polish, our Rebel Red. That's gonna get rid of the rest of the black compound residue and it's gonna protect this tank, this end cap, leave a nice good finish on it.